And good evening. Down to put the helm. <laughs> I think that looks a bit strange. What's going on there? Where's my hat? Oh, you can't go into space without a hat, can you? Because that, that would just be wrong. Absolutely wrong. Never mind. Right, it's Thursday. It is the last in the UK. It is the last day before before bank holidays <laughs> and Easter and stuffs. I thought I went through another universe this man box off. I know, pretty horrifying, right? <laughs> Don't worry, normality has been restored, my friend. Normality has been restored. Um, so, yes, yeah, so welcome back. Welcome back to Thursdays, where we are taking a short break. It won't be a permanent break, I don't think, because No Man's Sky, you know, as No Man's Sky is Hello Games, has <laughs> basically decided to chuck another massive update at us. So at some point, we will we will certainly return to a bit of No Man's Sky and, and have a look at... What's the, what's the latest one called? Is it Fractal? Or was that the previous one? Um, they... <laughs> They chuck content so out so fast, I can't give up with them. Um, but um, I, my my interest has been piqued, as you know, um, uh, by um, by a new, uh, well, not not exactly a new game per se, because it's not out yet. But it's um, something of great interest to me as a space exploring type um, interceptor. There we go. Fractal was the last one, wasn't it? So uh, yeah, so we have got stuff to know about uh, with No Man's Sky. We have unfinished business with No Man's Sky, which we will get back to. Um, but um, last week's stream was all about Starship Simulator, and um, I, I, my interest has been further piqued because there's a whole bunch of stuff um, that I, I'd like to investigate, which we haven't done yet, um, which has, gives an astronomy flavour to things. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of that. I don't know how much longer I'll because I don't want to kind of spoil it too much, because this is an early access game. It's a tech demo right now. It's not even alpha, so it's pre-alpha. So we can't go too far because we can't do too much because there's not too much to do. But um, there are things that were mentioned at the end of last week's stream. I thought, oh, look at that, look at that. Look at that, look at that. So we shall, we shall. Um, right, let's do the thing because the thing is the thing and the thing must be done. Uh, scrolls back to the top of the stream and says, hello to Have a Boo Boo. Hello, how are you doing, sir? Good to see you. Um, quite often first in the chat is Have a Boo Boo, so it's well done, you're there. That's very, very cool. And Electron Ghost is here as well. The Harkonnens are here. Poised as ever to be made a ruckus. Uh, Biff Boy 81 is here. Sleepy D Wagon Man is here. Glenn is here. Hello, Glenn. Good to see you. Zoe Just Chilling is just chilly uh what else would you want to do on a thursday afternoon anyway other than just chill <laughs> it's definitely the right thing to be do, doing congratulations on that zoe because i think that's exactly the right thing to be doing on thursday evening and the p7783 um said phases to stun i don't think we've got any operational weapons at the moment but uh, uh we'll see Let's see what we can do. Wolf999 is here, is here. Myon Toxin is here as well. The funny asteroid is here because it's never a good space game without a funny asteroid. Uh, Dex Vega is here. Dan Gobier is here. Oh, Dan, good to see you. Thank you for popping in as well. Um, and thank you for the amazingness of, of Starship Simulator that you've got this opportunity to have a look at. So that's good to see you do. Um, the Arrakis are here. <laughs> Ready to defend against the invasion of the Harkonnens, as ever. Uh, Chris Feige is here. Jeej is here. The subscribed with Prime. Thank you very much for Jeej. It's good to see you. Um, Chris is uh, not sure how active he's going to be because he's making food and modding something else. <laughs> That's definitely called multitasking, Chris. I'm very impressed. Commander Tragic Blue is here as well. Uh, Mad Monk Softers, I've already mentioned, is here. Poised as ever on Wikipedia. Should we need his services? Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um... Um, oh, hang on. Uh, Dan says, Drew, I updated the build about 10 minutes ago. Right, <laughs> It's only 53 megabytes. So you might want to do a quick Steam restart. Right, I'll go do that now then. Um, zip. I'll quit the game. And I will you know, hopefully not exceed my technical capability here. Let's, um, oh, it's updating itself. Well, that's clever. Excellent. Right. <laughs> Didn't even have to press anything. Uh, magic. Perfect stuff. Um, chilling is definitely a good Thursday activity. Wilf999. Uh, he's all well and good, but with Starship Shiloh, we might want to avoid Wolf359, yes, if we don't want to go there. Now, but that's what, that is basically, and the Big Boo is here. Hello, Big Boo, good to see you. Stone Cold, Mason and Blue Ganymede. Are uh, we taking the register? We have, yes, you've just made it in time, Blue Ganymede, to be part of doing the thing that is the thing. The thing must be done. So the thing has now been done. We can proceed. Um... So that'd be really, really good. Um, right. Am I streaming over the bank holiday weekend? No, I'm not. OK, so I make it a bit of a rule, as some of you will know, that I don't stream on bank holidays. So I try and have some sort of downtime, uh, partly downtime, partly it's kind of family time. So um, it kind of isn't, kind of isn't tomorrow because 
on Friday, I'm getting one of my cars ready for a bit of a cruise, which is happening on Saturday um, with my eldest son. I've also got to pick my youngest son up from the airport, who's back from university. Um, Sunday is some religious celebration that involves chocolate and bu bunnies, uh, <laughs> which I've got to go to. Uh, <laughs> and Monday is a bank holiday as well. Um, and actually slightly poignant for Monday, we are sprinkling the ashes of my dearly departed Douglas, who some of you all know I lost about a month and a bit ago. Uh, we're taking taking her ashes up to a spot where we used to take her for a lovely walk so she can forever, um, whatever dogs do in the afterlife around the hillsides. <laughs> so so that'd be that'd be nice but sad, but you know, kind of one of those things that you've got to do. So um, so yes, yeah, so that's my weekend. So yeah, so actually oddly enough, the next stream will be this one again but next Thursday if that makes sense uh, so I apologize for a bit of an interruption but it's the number of bank holidays at this time of year uh, plus a few other bits and pieces going on so there won't be a Friday Saturday or Monday stream I'm afraid this is very very bad but um, um, we'll be back next Thursday um, and uh, we'll see I'll, I'll let you know what we're doing in advance of that stream so that'd be good um, uh, we're celebrating the ether bunny is that <laughs> Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Um, so excellent. So I, I know it involves chocolate, which uh, it always piques my interest. So that's good. Right. So um, that now appears to up updated. Now, Dan, if you're still in the chat, I'm currently playing um, basically under instructions, I think, from your good lady wife, Claire, um, the beta or development branch. Is, is, that, is that what I'm supposed to be doing? Because uh, I don't know how to do that on um, on Twitter. Uh, not on Twitter. Yeah, well, on Twitter. I was told by Claire on Twitter how to do it, and I went into Steam, and and you can you can change <laughs> change stuff. So it currently says Star Starship Simulator Development. Um, so I'm just going to fire that up. Fingers crossed it's going to work, which it looks like it is. Isn't it boots up nice and fast? That's that's good. Um, so the development or default branches are both using the same build right now, so you'll be fine. Brilliant. Okay, so it doesn't matter. So okay, so. Um, right, so let me get into the game. Is it working? Come on, come on, Twitch. Yes, there it goes. Right. So, and we've got we've got sound, we've got music. I've got my I've got new earphones, by the way. You know, I busted them the other week on my Star Citizen stream. My entirely disastrous Star Citizen stream, where absolutely nothing worked, including me and my equipment. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a small matter of the game not working, but yeah, we're gonna save that. Uh, <laughs> Because, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, these things happen, right? But, um, yeah, I managed to bust my headphones. So I have new headphones. Look, they, they, they are here. They're all shiny and new. So that's working. Uh, so both I can hear the game. <laughs> you guys can hear it without getting any weird feedback. Um, and, it, yeah, it allows me to wear my hat, you see, because if I, if, I, if I put big, silly headphones on, I mean, it's just it's not very stylish, is it? So, you know. <laughs> That is a thing that has to be done. Right, so let's let's jump back in. Now we do have some training modules to play around with at some point, but I was intrigued because last week I learned, I can't remember if we talked about this in the last stream or not, um, that um, you know, obviously Dan's um, development goal here is to simulate as, as much as possible the, the entire um, um, galaxy, right? So we can go exploring stuff. Which sounds amazing, but I hadn't realised. I, I kind of assumed, given that the game is, you know, at a, at a relatively early stage of development, that there wasn't much stuff there to go explore. But um, and it, obviously, it's not finished or any, anything close to finished. But there is, there is stuffs out there to go, to go and explore. And since we have a FTL-powered starship, it seems like we ought to actually go and have a look at some stuff. Um, so I would, I would like to do that now. We've parked our ship, and it's. I'm guessing we are. Well, it looks like we're in interstellar space. Now I think we 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 got a set course for Sagittarius A star, didn't we? And it was like it's going to take us four days to get there, which probably wouldn't make for a very interesting stream. But I think the game has left us where we logged out, which is actually which is a good thing, right? I, I, I don't know. We'll have to go to the bridge in a minute and find out exactly where we are. Um, but um, I think it's it, it's put us into interstellar space where we where we were, which is which is quite nice. Um, so we kind of log out the game and the ship stays where it is. Um, um, now I suppose actually the question if Dan is still on the stream, um, um, if I left the ship running, 
at maximum speed and logged out of the game, does it? What does it do? Does it? Does it stop the ship where I left it, or does it? <laughs> does it keep flying? Um, that that would be quite interesting. And you know, I suppose one of the things is is what what would be the expected behaviour? Does it? Does does the ship need somebody to be on board it to keep moving, or does it sort of? Um, so, you know, so what does it do? That that's quite interesting. Um, so <laughs> I need the hat with integrated headphones. Has anybody has anybody made a fedora with integrated headphones? I <laughs> somehow I suspect that's not a thing. Uh, well, <laughs> actually, there no, it's the internet. Somebody will go and find one and immediately and go. There you go, <laughs> job done. Right. Um, so I think yes, I've got the head bob is back. So I'm going to switch that off. There we go. First person, no head bob. You can't cope with head bob. Right, so now I can't hear anything, am I? Oh, the volume's a little bit low. There we go. A Wi-Fi fedora. Right, so the bridge is... Uh, that's the commander. That's that's the back of the ship. So let's go back to the bridge. Find out where we are. Oh, all right. So there's the nav target, and it says... Oh, so we're definitely not moving. Look, 999 plus years. Um, Okay, so Dan says it saves the current state of things every 10 seconds or so. When you quit the game, when you return to it, it'll be whatever state it was in 10 seconds before you quit. So does that mean if it's moving, it will be moving? I can't remember whether I shut down the ship at the end of last week's stream or not. Did we bring it back to a halt? Which was probably a sensible place to do. Otherwise, after seven days, <laughs> it would be on the other side of the galaxy. And then we'd have to do an episode of Star Trek Voyager to get home. <laughs> um Offline flying would be okay, so it would still be at warp if you were at warp. To, oh, so it would. So basically, we can set the ship on a trajectory and then come back literally four days later. Can I walk through the galaxy sim? Yes, it's a hologram. Look, it it's it's just a hologram that's sort of freestanding. So yeah, that that works. Which I actually must admit, I think it's a very neat way of allowing everybody on the ship to. Um, experience you know where they are i particularly like this is something i always wondered about in star trek actually to to mention a space game a space franchise that's vaguely related to <laughs> what we're seeing on screen uh <laughs> i like the way that they're looking you know these guys are looking towards the center because this is actually the you know whilst it's obviously nice to look out the windows um actually a lot of the time you're going to be focused on the tactical stuff that's here and having a three-dimensional tactical display makes a lot more sense than just having tactical information on the 2d screen at the front of the ship and you've got all this other space around duh <laughs> sorry no pun intended um to, to make use of so I, I, I don't know if this is the intention but i can imagine you know if as we've seen with the solar system map over here uh, let's just sit down for a moment and scan. That's the stellar region. So when we switch to the stellar region, um, yeah, we can see a three-dimensional representation of the space around the ship. Um, and this is a proper hologram, look. So it's actually free-floating in space and it adjusts its orientation to point at you, which is quite clever. Um, but the 3D position of the stars is is correct, right? It's sort of, it's giving you a, a view of three-dimensional space. So that's useful for navigation and discussing where you're gonna go next and all that kind of stuff. But I suppose if you're in a tactical situation with enemy ships floating about potentially, or hostile ships, should we say, um, being able to visualize space around you in three dimensions whilst you're on the bridge is a really, really, really nice idea. And I much prefer this to the, you know, press M to go into map mode sort of stuff. Uh, and I think Dan mentioned last week that the idea being that you control all the ship's functions in the ship. You don't have menus to get, I mean, there are menus, if you like, on the consoles, but there aren't menus that kind of get in your way. So the game is built from the ground up to be immersive and thus potentially good for a VR as well. So, um, you know, being able to stand here as the captain or as the as the navigation officer go, oh yeah, well, you know, Wolf 359 to pick a system totally at random. 
<laughs> um, is over there, and we're currently here, so we can't we can't get through there without going past the Alpha Centauri or whatever the thing is. You know what I mean? Um, so I love that. I think that's really nice. It's also remember the name of my ship. Look, the UNSF Eurydice um, uh, four two four two. So so that's quite good. Now, um, before what I'd like to do um, is I was quite keen because one of the things that is good here. Um, is that at the moment uh, sorry and Dan's made a couple of extra comments let's just go, let's just go back to that um, so that was very much the plan the command station will eventually be able to switch the hollow display to output of any of the bridge stations okay so that's nice I like that too uh, so if the captain wants to see the tactical overview he can press the tactical button on the command console and the hollow display will update accordingly yeah so you know so that's really nice it's making use of hologrammatic technology that obviously doesn't really exist but we can envisage that would exist um <laughs> mad monks have just found a pair of earphones called fedora 37 <laughs> eurydice um the reason for eurydice is i years and years and years and years ago when i was um, much younger and very rubbish at writing and i did write a sci-fi epic which will never ever ever be published right because it's rubbish um <laughs> which was the voyages of the USS Eurydice, because obviously I couldn't use the word enterprise. Um, uh, it was a total ripoff and a bit sort of teenage heroes in space angst is probably the way that I would I would summarize it now. Um, it will never see the light of day, but I did I did write it. OK, when I was about 15 or 16. So um, um, and, 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 and the hero starship was called the USS Eurydice. So, hey, there we go. It's a little nod to my younger self. Uh, <laughs> I particularly like, okay, so you know, if we zoom into, uh, we were on 10 light years, so we can zoom out to 20 light years, and then we get, look, we get a much bigger set of thing. Um, and then we can zoom out to 30 light years, 40 light years, and we get basically a chunk of our galaxy um, like that. And that just looks amazing. Now, um, given that, Okay, so I named the ship. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can't we review it like you review others for this first work? No, because it was never published. Okay, so I, that's that's my get out of jail free card, right? It was never published. <laughs> so no, <laughs> you can't. Um, uh, there's always a balance between realism and fun. So weapons will have diminishing returns over distances. Mostly it's going to be beams and railguns. Okay. I mean, yeah, I get that. You've got to have... Um, um, you know, a rate, a, a practical range limit to to weapons. Um, so, um, but okay, so beams, beams and rail guns. Okay, that's going to be that's going to be quite fun. I quite like rail guns in space. Makes sense to me. Projectiles would actually be <laughs> extremely dangerous things. Um, so um, now um, you may have noticed. You may have noticed that Dan suggested giving me a, uh, a little update. Okay, um, now. Um, uh, Dan, Dan has been busy doing 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 a little thing. Um, uh, well, actually, a very very big thing, as far as I'm concerned. So, a uh, huge thanks to Dan um, for for doing this. And it's a little treat for those of you who know me. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to do this. Okay. So, uh, as we know, uh, there we go. There it is. Let's go. Let's go. Choosing a system completely at random. Let's go to the Lakai 9352 system. Uh, we're going to send it to the helm. I think I've done that right. Uh, we're going to we're going to pop back um, initially because uh, we have all the stars. Now I don't know which star catalog was it. The Hipparchus catalog, I think Dan mentioned. Um, and you sensor target. There we go. Okay, so 15 light years away. Um, and engage FTL. I like that noise. And we're going to engage the autopilot. There we go. So Hibarco's cap. So up to about 50 light years range. Um, and um, over time, I'll add a lot more because there are obviously lots of other. Um, things. What I like about this again is we can get up and walk around whilst the ship is flying and just peer out the windows of, of space. It's just, <laughs> it's just particularly nice. Um, have I? <laughs> I found the Argus catalog. Uh, no, we don't use that one for space travel. 
almost looks like a little Christmas tree that's been set up in the middle with all this stuff. Oh, of course, it's actually, look, it's moving in real time. So we are traveling at whatever speed we're traveling at, which I think is like super fast. So we're traveling like years per second. But look, as you can see, look, it's just shifting along as we move. There's the target. And we can actually actually stand inside the hologram, which is which is really nice. 300 light years per hour, okay. Um, so, um, it's nice having the real stars, okay. So it's nice having the real stars. Now I understand that um, what I'd like to see if we can have a look at this evening is that um, there are astronomical things in here uh, definitely ludicrous speed, but it's a sensible speed. It gets you to the the centre of the galaxy at um, maximum. Uh, we can't. It's not warp. We it's just FTL. Um, but maximum maximum power uh, would get you to the centre of the galaxy in four days non-stop travel. Um, um, and I'm assuming in the in the final game, then there will be kind of fuel limitations or possibly wear and tear limitations on doing that so you I don't know push your mark you might not be able to just go straight there and say right um etc uh, etc et but um uh, you know it, it's theoretically possible depending on how efficient the starship is and, and all the other tasks that the crew have got to perform because at the moment um you know I'm 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 the lone occupant of this spaceship, um, and we need we need a whole bunch of other crew on board. I calculate that if Voyager travelled at the speed that speed, they would have been back uh, from the Delta Quadrant just under ten days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's the problem? Uh, the ship will. Okay, so Dan says the ship will wear over time, which is part of the engineering gameplay, and you will need to skim gas giants to gather helium and deuterium. Okay, so we. We did have a look on last week's stream about the fuel sources for the ship, which was which was quite interesting as well. Um, <laughs> don't turn into a salamander at maximum speed. No. <laughs> I did like, I mean, that was a silly episode, wasn't it? But um, I did like the quip at the end. <laughs> you know, Mr. Paris, um, I thought of having children, but not with you. <laughs> I did like that, so that's really good. Um, Orkney Sean is here. Evening all. Sorry for the tidy response. So I'm interested to know how the refueling works. So, so scooping fuel from gas giants to gather helium and deuterium. So that's that's a nice bit of gameplay. Presumably with a, 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 you know, a fresh on of danger associated with taking your starship into the atmosphere of a gas giant. Um, okay, so we're now closing on... Nav target is now imminent. Okay, so that's just warning us we're in close. And we're coming into range. Okay, so I think I need to, therefore, does it automatically stop? Here we're coming into the star, literally straight ahead of us. And this this star did look amazing. Now I've got to turn the polarization filters on so we can see it at this close. So let's. That's does that auto disconnect? Speed is off. Yes, look at that. So it actually shuts itself down. Really nice. Okay, so there's a switch on the wall over here. So at the moment it's kind of just glaringly bright. So we can switch off over here and then switch the window polarization on. And then that, that allows us to see the detail. Oh, and that's just amazing. That just allows us to see the detail of the star. And the star here, on first glance, looks static. But when you look closely at it, if I, I was wondering how to zoom in. Uh, there was a zoom in command. X, nope. X was f X was full on the floor. <laughs> uh, right mouse button. Sorry. There we go. Look at the surface. It looks amazing. You won't be able to see the chat for a moment. It's kind of just seething, like you kind of would expect it to, in slow motion, which is really, really, really nice. Um, does the helm console or others have a switch for the window plug? So I don't know actually. It's a good question, because it is. <laughs> whilst it's nice to have a switch over here, it would it would sort of make sense for one of the um, one of the uh, one of the 
you know, the, the crew of the bridge to, be, to switch the polarization filter on without having to get up their chair and walk over there. I, I don't know. Maybe that's a, <laughs> if that's the thing for them. Eventually, there will be a full environmental control station in the side alcove. Okay, so there's there's uh, there's space here, which is obviously unused at the moment, uh, on both sides. Um, I'm mean, imagining there's probably going to be a lift, isn't there, as well, possibly in here, because otherwise there's a lot of walking to get anywhere from the bridge, which in the case of an emergency might not, might not be ideal. Um, so anyway, so we, we've arrived here in the Lakai 9352 system. Now, some of you will know the Lakai 9352 system because of a certain author's um, <laughs> books were set there. Now, um, Dan has very generously done done something for me so have a look at this guys uh, so I'm going to uh, see if I can remember how to do this where is the system how do I I'm just trying because I'm in the system oh there we go right of course we're here right so look what we have in the system <laughs> I press the style systems button. We'll have a look at that. Yes. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Dan's uh, Glenn has Glenn has sussed it out. Um, so there's there's a planet there. <laughs> that some of you may know about. In fact, two planets that some of you may know about, and three planets that you may not have realised were there that never really needed to be named actually in the books because um, um, you, you can't see them. So, um, so yes, yeah, so the, the Lakai 9352 system has been customized slightly. Um, and so let's go to uh, the star system. And then uh, if we scan there, it gives us the description of Lakai 9352. Um, and if we scan Mayura, it gives us, uh, it's a gas giant. Oh, if you press one A, you you'll see the whole orrery. Okay, um, okay. So uh, and um, in 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 the book, of course, Mayura is used as the sense of timekeeping by the next planet out, the people on the Zerio, because it passes in front of the sun regularly. And um, but the Zerio has a has a description. Um, I might need to pan this so you can uh, see it well enough on the screen, so it's not in the way of the thing. But it basically says. Um, Azira is an Earth-like world that orbits at an average distance of 0.16 AU around its central star. So it's very, very close because it's a red dwarf star. The Goldilocks zone of a red dwarf star is very, very small, causing it to be tidally locked. Uh, you'll know what that means. Uh, it has an average radius of 5,000 something kilometers and typical surface temperature of 290 Kelvin. So it's, it's quite nice, okay? <laughs> Quite nice. The dark side of Azura is frigid and uninhabitable, bordered by ice cliffs dozen of kilometers high, which is, is a very familiar piece of description. Uh, strong winds blow from one hemisphere to the other with a single massive cyclone dominating the star facing side of the planet. The landmass in the temperate region is home to a feudal pre-technological pre civilization. Bom, bom, bom. <laughs> Wonder what's going on there then. Um, so, um, one, I mean, first off, Dan, thank you ever so much. That's the, <laughs> to, uh, and we're going to go have a look in a moment um, to, to see a star system that is, if you like, created in my imagination, which you, who, who knows, maybe it's really there, but probably not. But, um, you know, the universe, etc., etc. Uh, but anyway, thank you ever so much for putting that in here um, as, as a thing. I mean, it, A, it's amazing that you can you can do that. And um, it, you know, but you know, huge, 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 huge appreciation from me. I mean, that was an unexpected thing. I was absolutely delighted when you said you were going to do that. So it's very, 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 very. It's probably one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me, computer game wise. So uh, it's definitely up there with my list of amazing computer, um, computer game things. Um, so, uh, but it also shows that um, what what possibilities exist for the creation of content in the future. You know, custom designed solar systems with stories associated with them and you know all that kind of stuff so I mean, it's just <laughs> it's ludicrously exciting uh <laughs> yeah because uh you could have um you know abandoned civilizations civilizations that died out a million years before and all that all that's left is relics and you know all that sort of stuff uh and it makes sense since this is an exploration game that there'd be all that sort of stuff out there to 
you know, to potentially discover, which has to be kind of built and, and written and, and put together and then put in the game for people to find. I mean, it's just insanely exciting. So um, I'm quite looking forward to what's going to happen there. Um, let's switch to one AU. So there we go. So there is, rather amazingly, um, the um, the Lakai system as 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 it is in uh, in my in my novels. So there is there is Azurio in a in a slightly wider orbit, and there is um, Mayura, which is a what's basically uh, called a hot Jupiter um, in a really really incredibly insanely tight orbit around the star Lakai um, because. Um, um, you know, such, and such things do really, really exist, right? Um, you know, it's it's a weird phenomenon, but that that configuration of having a gas giant in a in, a, in an insanely close orbit around a star seems to be a relatively common thing uh, out in space, um, and it's used by the folks who live in on the zero in my novel as a as a timekeeping device because it regularly crosses the star. They can see that from the surface of this planet, and so they use it as a time mechanism. Um, so, which is one of the founding uh, bits and pieces of, um, of that. So, I'm going to actually set course for Mayura. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see what that looks like, if that makes sense. <laughs> because whilst I've imagined it, it's going to be quite cool to actually look at it. So, let's let's have a quick look. Indulge me, if you will, my friends. Um, and we'll go and have a look at at Mayura, which can't be far away, given that we're right here in the sun, uh, pretty much. So, let's send to Helm. I've scanned the target. Yeah, I've done that. Okay, so let's let's move across to uh, use the sensor target. So how far away is it? It can't be far. It's literally two million kilometers away. So engage FTL. I don't think we've got any sublight engines at the moment, so we're having to use the FTL to do it. And it's all autopilot, which is quite nice. So. I'm going to replace those AU buttons with plus minus buttons for smoothly zooming in and out. The preset distances are no good for the diversity of star systems. So, yes, because interesting enough, I mean, the entirety of what you see there, I think even the furthest planet out um, in my imaginary solar system, which is modeled on real solar systems, um, is kind of like within the orbit of Venus. You know, it's, in, it's insanely small compared to our solar system. And our solar system is insanely small compared to some of the big ones out there such as stars like if it does have planets you know a star like Rigel or Betelgeuse because um, much much bigger stars will have planets with much 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 bigger orbits um, so you're yeah, trying to get that onto a scale that makes sense is is, is, is going to be very very difficult space is difficult to scale it's really really difficult so let's let's pan around so um, there's the target two million kilometers away And so I'm going to get up because let's go for an external view um, of the ship. I think. Oh no, I have to be sitting in the in the chair to do that, don't I? So there we go. Okay, so we're, there's the gas giant, um, and there's the sun. That's literally how close how close they are. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that you know, we can see see that over there. Now, I don't know, um, Dan. Tell me, are do the planets orbit yet in real time, or is that, and is that a planned thing? Is that something that um, you would do, or uh, are they already doing it? Um, I can't. I don't know if I would be able to see any movement at this range or not, but. Um, so um, in, term, in terms of the tidal locking, Azuria surface doesn't match yet. I need to, re, to write the function for handling tidally locked planets and icing over one side. Okay. Um, okay, so the orbital calculations are done behind the scenes, but right now the system is stationary. Okay, so if I went away from the system and came back, would it, would it update positions? Um, so I don't know. So, so anyway, you know, it's, it's a gas giant, so um, there we go. So we get to see... <laughs> The me or a gas giant for the first, first time, which is pretty cool. Um, so Azuria is on the other side of the sun at the moment. Um, so we'll fly back over there and have a quick look. Um, it would still be where it is. Okay, so it's stationary at the moment. It's it's kind of computing things. Okay, that kind of makes sense. But like you say, a work in progress. Um, 
Okay, so let's go to Azuria. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> it feels very weird, actually. I tell you, I mean, I suppose because I'm a writer, and yeah, imagination and stuff is my, um, yeah, the, my my thing really. I suppose it's what I do, um, creating crafting worlds in my mind and then trying to describe them. The I, I mean, part of my brain is going. I know this is just a computer game, and I, I don't mean just a computer game to try and. You know, you know, put down what Dan has done because this is this is a stonking thing that he's created already. But yeah, a computer game. Okay, it's a it's it, it's a thing that exists on my my PC, um, and I know that. But the other the, the part of my brain which is totally into immersion and and um, you know um, suspension of reality, suspension of belief, kind of stuff is basically, oh my God, I'm here. <laughs> it's real. It exists, and. <laughs> It's such a great feeling. Um, right, so let's let's. I mean, this is. I mean, I can. This is this is very very weird to me. I'm going to a place that I made up in my mind, you know. And here we go across to. Um, oh, I need to engage the FTL drive. That always helps. I need to remember how to fly a starship. It's it it's it's a weird thing being able to do this kind of stuff now. Is because a game like this is so immersive it, it, it works and it, it looks how it should look boom the sun goes straight past us um, and it it all kind of hangs together like a, yeah as if you're in some kind of weird sophistication sophisticated planetarium um, and actually we've still got the sun shield on that's why we can't see anything from inside the starship um, let me go and switch that off because we've we've now arrived with the sort of the, the shields, the, the visual shields on. Um, so let's turn that off because we're no longer close to the sun. There we go. And there's the. <laughs> there it is. I mean, <laughs> God. Um, um, really looking forward to the simulation. A ship crewed by all the subscribers to Drew Stream. Just think of the scenario. It would be. It, it would be. The backside of the glass giant is actually glowing. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it should be, of course, because the gas giant is like crazily close into the stars. So it should be, you know, glowing and, and doing all sorts of weird stuff in the infrared. Um, and, but that, you know, they're there on, you know, I, I mean, a, a, a FTL starship and on the bow of my starship is a planet that I made up in my mind. I mean, it's, it blows, my, blows me away that such things are possible. Um, so, you know, the idea of being able to craft some story content and put that in a game like this for other players to find and speculate over and, and stuff you know it's just it's just insanely exciting um and there we go so we are parked in front of azurio in the lakai 9352 system it it, it, it exists down there are all the stories that i wrote i mean you know that's just amazing that's just amazing so dan thank you ever so much i mean it's just that's an absolute privilege to see something like that. It really is. Um, what, what an amazing thing. Um, if you want a bit of a challenge in the external view, you can fly the ship using the key. So I, I know I can roll it and bank it. Does it, is there a, is there a velocity? Oh, okay, hang on, there we go. So uh, if you press Z to enable the FTL, and then use the WS keys to manage the speed, you can use the cursors to Oh, can I? Okay, so you know, gauge. Oh, oh, they've even got a little visual effect. Okay, so it's created a, whatever the whatever it creates for the FTL drive. So let's not point straight at the planet because that might end our trip really quick. We don't want to pass straight for a star or fly close to a supernova, do we? Uh, <laughs> such things are dangerous. Um, okay, so I'm flying over the. Oh, actually, look, we are moving. Oh, I hadn't realised that. So we're at a very low speed. Uh, okay, so how effective do you think the ship will be when the crew spends all its time in the bar? <laughs> we'll have to have some. We'll have to have some ground rules, won't we? Okay, so let's see how how cl how close can I get to the planet without causing a you know. A, a danger. Right. So how do you manage the speed? W S keys. 
Okay, so tapping W and S repeatedly will increase, increase the field strength by 1%. Right. Drew crashes, <laughs> Drew crashes into his own planet, wipes out the civilization on the ground with a massive strike because a starship hit the ground at a reasonable fraction of the speed of light. That would be a very, 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 very big explosion. Um, probably to be avoided. Okay, so let's... We are moving very slowly, but nicely slowly, I feel, over, over Azurio. So... I tell you what I want to do is down there. There's a, what looks to be a quite nice looking continent. So let's fly the ship. Let's see if I can get this right uh, across that continental area and just get a feel for what the ground looks like. There we go. That doesn't that look amazing? So we can sort of look out the side. So I think I've got the ship close to skimming the atmosphere. Let's just nudge it a little bit be too much. I don't want to get too close. Right, let's go a little bit faster. Nudging up. Famous last words. You can shift to go up in ten percent. I'm 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 being <laughs> being super cautious at the moment. Okay, so there we go. Look, we actually. Gonna nudge it up a little bit more. There we go. And let's just have a look at the surface because there's a, there's a continent coming up, which is nice. So the star is over there. Look, so that's actually a really nice view. Look, so there's Miura actually, as you would see it from um, the surface of Azure. You'd see it cross. You'd see it cross the the solar disk. So I don't know, is is the plan to to allow you to go down to the planets at some point? So the main ship won't be, okay, um, Dan's already on the, on, the, on the case. The main ship won't be able to land, will you shuttle us for that? Likely a transition upon hitting the atmosphere to generate the terrain, at least until we have a bigger team. Okay, because that's a, you know, um, a, a, a big, big thing to do, isn't it? But that's, I mean, the planets look really nice. I mean, you can see your textures there a little bit low res at the moment as we're getting close, but um, they do feel nice. Have I got enough ground clearance? I think I might just nudge it a tiny bit away from the surface there. Um, so, well, they aren't warp engines, D-Dexter. You can't, you can't say warp engines. It's got an FTL drive. Um, I don't know if Dan's written the sort of background law on what technology is um behind the ftl drive it looks to me like some sort of um you know from the visual effect it looks like it's um i don't know what it's doing actually is, is it tunneling through space is it a wormhole is it a compression um okay so dan's okay dan's got the guys on the case so ftl harbor is based on the alcubarri eric linzer so, so it is effectively a warp drive but it's not um it's not the warp drive so actually that terrain looks really nice down there. <laughs> like, I just want to go down there and have a look. <laughs> we know we can't do that just yet. I like the atmosphere effect actually. So how is there is there an have you modelled an atmosphere? Um, it looks like you have. I don't know if we can risk diving slightly into the atmosphere. Um, is that? It looks like you've got an atmosphere. I don't want to destroy the ship. How, I mean, look at, I mean, it actually looks really nice. Done a really good job on the surfaces. There is an atmosphere. Okay, so will it damage my ship if I go into it at this sort of speed? <laughs> I can't expect that it ought to, really. Um, we are flying very low. There we go. I need to probably pull up. A little bit okay so you can see the the, the the sky is brightening slightly the ship's invulnerable right now okay so i'm safe okay so that we can just dive then what speed we're doing we're doing an insane speed to be going into an atmosphere out um okay so yeah look the sky is brightening from there we go we're flying very, very <laughs> causing some very very bad in, um oh, look at that that looks insanely good actually 
considering <laughs> the science exactly um i think we probably caused some very very bad environmental damage by doing that but uh, wow <laughs> i'll do it to what's the worst that could happen um that looks amazing i mean it does look really really good um so um okay so <laughs> it's a special drive which allows all that uh, made, all that tedious monkey about in bistros <laughs> yes indeed exactly right um I just sunk the moments. Think of the sonic boom of something going past that quickly. I mean, that was kind of quite, I don't know what speed we're doing, but um, what's the worst that could happen? Um, I mean, you can see the possibilities. I mean, imagine that. Um, and you put yourself in an orbit and then you're like, we're going to go down and investigate this planet. I went, oh, so exciting. I love the idea of exploring like this with a, with a big ship, a ship that's got lots of capability on board. And for a game that is oriented it towards um, um, you know, exploration. Now, I mean, I must admit, Dan, one of the things that um, would be fabulous if you do get around to doing it is is having that real time, um, let's just turn the ship around and go back. Um, that real-time um, orbital stuff, if, if that's a plan in the, in the future, um, <laughs> the drink off radiation from the from the from the warp drive. Yeah. Um, so because you know, it, wouldn't it be lovely? I mean, who doesn't want to go down there, park, you know, park the space shuttle, whatever it happens? Yeah, no, you turn at a reasonable fraction of the speed of light. Should definitely all be dead. How do the inertia dampeners work? <laughs> they work very well indeed. Uh, so. Um, you know the um, the ability to um, you know to, to stop, have a look, and then sit down on the planet, um, um, and then just sort of watch the sunset or the sunrise or something like that, or find weird planets with with crazy orbital patterns and, and things like that. You know, it just the sightseeing is is such a big part of of these sort of things. So I mean, it's it's got such huge potential. It's so <laughs> It really is amazingly exciting. Um, and that's that there is thrilling to me that we're just flying our spaceship across um, an Earth-like world that we, you know where there's a civilization. We're probably freaking the civilization out there because they could probably see us at this altitude. Um, what the hell's that? <laughs> but yeah, what, what an amazing, what an amazing thing. So, um, you know, it, it's, 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 it's stunning. Um, so Drew, I mean, yeah, I mean, one of the things, I mean, let's 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 stop the ship a moment because I'm gonna press. Is it? Can I slow it down? It doesn't seem to be slowing down. Then uh, let's let's disengage the FTL. <laughs> Handbrake. There we go. Um, <laughs> that's the that's the way to do it. Um, what you, of course, you can do. Look, I mean, this is the thing. One of the things I liked about this from last week is that if I bank the ship around and orientate it, I don't know. Let's pitch up a little bit there, back a bit. Um, we can put the ship in a position where it's got just an amazing view. Look, so we can just sort of pitch it like that. I think that's about right. Now, if I get out of the ship. Not out of the ship, out of the off the bridge, and we now walk to the back of the ship. Oh, we've got the head bob on. Turn that off. I was spiel. Um, let's go down the stairs, and we look out the window. I mean, look, there it is. I mean, it just <laughs> just looks utterly, utterly astonishing. Um, you know, and it's. It, that's not a simulated image in the sense that it's just been made up for the purposes of looking out the back windows. That's actually there. So if the ship changes its orientation, which I I can't do from here because I'm not seeing the, the thing, um, you know, we can I can look. So I mean, <laughs> it's a very good point. I'm going to get a beer um, because I can. There we go. And then I use this is what's this is a, this is a nice control method. Okay, you I uh, picked it up the wrong way around. You kind of use the use the scrolly mouse wheel to and I think this is my favorite chair over here um, let's just put that be on the table I'll stand it up because this is quite good you pick depending on where you pick it up it has some physics isn't that amazing 
Um, I like that. So let's sit down there. There's my beer. And I can drop it on the table. Actually, I presume I can't open it yet, but that doesn't seem quite happy with that. But anyway, oh no, <laughs> I've chucked it across the table. Um, come back here, Mr. Beer. So yeah, I'm a bit OCD about beers. <laughs> I'm going to put my beer as close as I can in front of me. There we go. That's that's better. Let's just leave it there. That'll do. Right. Sit on that chair. And <laughs> my beer goes flying across the table. Is there space tea? Uh, there definitely will have to be space tea. I think we'll have to make future requests. Um, yeah. Forget about all the astronomy and all that other stuff down here. <laughs> space tea and space beer is what we're what we're. Doing. So we can sit in the bar. Um, with my space beer, which is now, alas, on the table, on the floor over there, um, looking out at the planet Azurio from, from the Shadewood Saga. What a time to be alive! Um, <laughs> when you're shaking it, it would make a mess if I did open it. Um, <laughs> Dan says that we'll be overhauling the object manipulation a lot, so you'll be able to consume them eventually. Oh, that'd be really, really good. Uh, and Command Seeds Brother says he's not coming unless there's a cappuccino machine. Uh, and look at the chair rotates and everything look so we can spin around it's very nice i do like the way the ship is oriented so you know there we go space view right really really cool so anyway um i'm supposed to be doing a bit of space exploration so dan thank you ever so much for creating i suppose i mean there's no other word for it um instantiating I mean, <laughs> that's the right word um the um the Shadewood Saga system, you know, Lakai 9352, as I imagined it in my book. I mean, it's just such a privilege to be able to see that thing. So that's, that's really made my, well, it's made my year, actually. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Um, now, I was quite, the, the, from the astronomy perspective, okay, so now I'm, you know, for those of you who know me, I, I am an amateur astronomer and I've, I, you know, to toot my own trumpet for a bit, um, you know, I created, well, not created, but I, I was the first chairman of my local astronomical society, which we created 15 years ago. And I've, I've always had a love of astronomy since, you know, I was tiny. Um, so the idea of being in a Alcuberry warp powered starship and being able to explore the actual stars that are visible from Earth, I mean, <laughs> again, is insanely exciting. And whilst games like Elite Dangerous have allowed us to go and see such stars, um, which is which has been great, and and one of the greatest things about Elite Dangerous was its galaxy, right? The the the, um, the Stellar Forge, as it was called, um, which is an amazing thing. But the one thing that Elite doesn't have that this does is the transit between the places. So in in Elite, obviously, you you hyperdrive, you jump between one place and another, and the background gets updated as you jump, and you see the new thing player and you can see the stars slowly shift in you know as, as you're jumping around and jumps can be between sort of you know you know handfuls of light years up to I don't know what the, what's the maximum range limit in elite nowadays it used to be about 60 70 light years it's probably gone up right um, but you know maybe let's say between 0 and 100 light years in a jump and the jump takes a couple of minutes whereas what's been done here in Starship Simulator is you, you proceed through the galaxy at a you know, an incredible FTL speed, but it's not instantaneous. So you you move through the galaxy and see it evolve as you're going past, much more sort of um, you know, in motion rather than in you know kind of atomic jumps, which is to me a lot more appealing because if there's something interesting in the distance, like say a nebula or you know a cluster or whatever it happens to be, you see it slowly taking form in front of you as you. As you go, and it's just, that's that's so much more immersive than just doing a jump. Um, it's just a nicer way to travel. Um, so, what I was going to do is I was going to um, have a look here. So let's what, I, what I'd quite like to do. Let's go back to Seoul for a moment. Um, uh, if if it's is it is it listed as Seoul? Um, I see some other familiar ones, Lakai 8780 there, so um, Seoul should be, ah, it's no, Seoul is outside 10 light years, so that's why it's not showing up. Uh, it should be about 10.74, so it should be, there it is, Seoul, okay, 10.2, okay, 
it's just about right. Um, if you sit at the helm and press the home key, it will auto target the earth. Okay, so that's quite good. Um, um, so let's scan the target. We know what Sol is. Let's go there, and it's got all the planets as you'd expect. Center the helm. Um, what is it? Interesting enough. What does it say about Earth at the moment? Oh, we can't can't scan it because we're not in the system. Well, okay, that makes sense. Um, let's go to let's go to Earth. Engage FTL. Use the sensor target. I like this navigation system. It makes an awful lot of sense. It's got all the power that you need. But it just, you know, it's a starship. It doesn't need a joystick because it's it's a starship. It's a bit more sophisticated. It's just it's 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 automated. It's it's what it's what should happen. I feel if you were flying a starship. So okay, so we're now leaving the, the Lakai system behind. There goes the star. Look at that. So in real time, the star is flying. There's the solar system shrinking away behind the starship as we leave as we enter interstellar space. And now we're on our way back to Sol, which is 10 light years away. Um, we're still accelerating. And then, you know, we can see the light years. Now, what I noticed last time is if you look at nearby stars, you can see, I don't know what that is, GI65 something. It's five light years away. Because we're moving at an, you know huge FTL velocity, um, the star is moving, the parallax is visible. So you can see the nearby stars are moving, um, are moving past, right? Um, you remember you can warp to Earth directly, you don't need to go to the star. Okay, so we can actually set sub-targets in the solar systems as well. Um, I just like that effect that, um, you know, the stars are moving in the background. You can see there in the background, some of the stars are just shifting. So the stars are, the, you, can, you can identify things with parallax. It's just, it's just gloriously immersive. Um, and I like the sense of voyaging somewhere. Um, and seeing the stars subtly shift as you're moving. Um, and then yeah, if you get into presumably denser parts of the galaxy, I don't know how, how you've modeled the galaxy down. Have you, have you, have you modeled dense things inside the arms, you know, the spiral arms of the galaxy, and then there'll be kind of quite sparse areas, presumably in between the spiral arms. Um, you know, the, yeah, galactic density and all those kind of things. It's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be fascinating to see how it, how it how it appears now i can see over there as well so there's alpha centauri um four light years away as we're closing in on earth we're getting quite close so that's obviously the nearest star system to sol um which quite is that that nebula in the background there is that oh there's wolf 359 as well um is that nebula in the background is that is that a piece of eye candy or is that really there in the game as a as a thing here comes here comes the earth or well, here comes the solar system. We'll see the planets. There you go. Look, there's Neptune, Pluto, and we're now decelerating into the sun. There's there's our solar system just expanding out as the ship ship auto throttles down. Uh, we're diving straight into the star at the moment. Don't have to put the brakes on. Um, it's a real three D object. So what what actually? Now of course we can't see it because <laughs> it put you directly into the star. Uh, <laughs> So there's a real. So what actually is it? Uh, that's what I was curious. Um, now we've been to Earth already. Now what? I, before we go and look at that, let's go and. Um, what I wanted to do is, I think we probably, for the benefit of everybody on board the ship, probably want to turn the filters on again. Let's do that. That is a. That's a very cool thing. Okay, so that's 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 our star. Let's. What I wanted to do is, now. Um, let's just see. I know Dan said last week that these constellations weren't all that visible at the moment for various reasons, uh, but I just wanted to see whether I could make anything out because if we go to if we target um, Sirius, that's a piece of the sky that most of us know really really well. Oh, look, there's a terrestrial planet in. In the Sirius system, um, very cool. Right, so let's just target that. That should have it. Where would it be? Where's Alpha Centauri? So will it show us outside? Let's just have a quick look. There's Earth. We're probably a bit too. 
Oh, that's, so there's a sense dog. Okay, so the star is in the way. So let's ask. Let's just bank the ship around. Let's get away from the sun for a moment. So let's engage the drive. Accelerate a bit. Are we moving? Have I done that right? Yes, there we go. The sun is receding a little bit. So let's move away from the sun for a moment. First time chat from Colossus. This is super cool to see. I've been trying to figure out accurate galaxy generation for a while now to make something similar. Super cool to see more games. I mean, it is amazing. Right, okay, let's, let's sh slow down again. Uh, but do you mean I can switch off the FTL drive? Give us it. Yes, there we go. Okay, so we're looking at Sirius there. There we go, it's off. So I'm just trying to... Can I make out which way round would it be? Um, I was just trying to see if I could make out any any constellation. I'm looking for what I'm looking for is Orion, um, which should I, mean, I don't know which way up we are. Uh, it's amazing how slow one C is when you're flying away from a star side job. It is once. I mean, light speed is way too slow, isn't it? It's really annoying. Um, I was just trying to see if I could work out. So Wolf 3, 5, now, now um, I can't, what I want to do is be able to target a couple of things and go say, okay, can you show me Beetlejuice as well? Um, but the problem with the constellations is most of the consumer stars are further than, oh, I see, okay, so they're further than 50 light years away, so we can't see them right yet. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so they're not in the game. Right, ah, okay. Right, I get you. So we're, we're, we're on a hiding to nothing trying to see a constellation at the moment because they don't exist. Um, okay. So let us, in that case, now Sirius, so I don't know how much of the sort of total astronomical content is it. I'm just curious. Let's go and have a look at Sirius. Now Sirius should have two, two stars in it. Um, so I don't know if you've done things like that yet, Dan. Have you done Sirius B? Oh, that B-class. No, so there's a B-class star. Is that the main system? Um, okay, so multi-star systems are on the to-do list, right? Okay, and I need to add code for applying apparent magnitude. Okay, so we're not going to see we're not going to see double stars at this stage. Okay, that's cool. Um, but we can go and see a B-class star, which of course is much much brighter than the sun. A terrestrial planet at five AUs out, so that's gonna. Yeah. I'm just curious to go to the Sirius system because, I mean, surely you can't be serious, right? <laughs> uh dear. I find myself amusing even if you guys do. Uh, <laughs> let's go to Sirius. And um, because we can engage. But I do want to see if we can have to wake at the lounge. <laughs> Please come and pick up the beer. That's uh, surely you can't be true. No. Um, let us leave. So look, look, this is this is what's nice. Okay, as we accelerate, then the sun moves away. Okay. Um, look at that. I mean, as we accelerate, boom. That's just amazing to watch. Doesn't that give you a real sense of scale of the galaxy, right? Because that's our entire solar system is now shrunk to like a nothingness. You know, all that vastness inside the orbit of Pluto, boom, gone. Um, and then we're still in the depths of interstellar space. And this is just the local stars. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> bad Drew, yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. Dad jokes allowed, just nobody mentioned Lloyds of London. <laughs> Did I mention I used to work for Lloyds of London? I think I have. On, on, on rare occasions, perhaps, maybe. Um, <laughs> so um, it's taking us a little while to get to Sirius, obviously. I need to do that, go to a particular planet thing, actually. We need to try that. I like that the ship is totally dark in interstellar space as well. I mean, I suppose it would m make sense to potentially just really, because it, it's just a big black shadow, which of course is what it would be, but maybe, maybe the ship will have some running lights in the future, just so you can see its outline. Cause it, it, 
whilst that's sort of accurate, I suppose it just from a from a comfort perspective, it, it does look a bit weird being totally black. Um, so it will have spotlights and things. Okay, so that's cool. Yeah, I kind of expected you would do that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> behaves as you do. Um, it's a seriously long trip, along with lighting up windows and things like that. Yeah, so it's it's you know it's going to look like a illuminated ship. Um, I like the fact it takes a bit of time to get to these places. Um, So the other thing I suppose um, um, is a question for the solar astronomy side of stuff. Um, oh look, there's a, there's a stack of things in this solar system, so we're barreling into Sirius here, which is going to be like a crazily bright. Ooh, look at that! Shh. A really, it's a. And of course, it's going to be a big, a seriously big star. Yeah, I mean, whoa, look at the size of it. Youch. Okay. Which is again, and I love the graphical effects there. Look at that. That's just off the right hand side of the ship there. There we go. We've actually arrived. Um, I don't know how close to Sirius we actually are in this perspective, but it's it's very it's it's seriously big. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what happens if you run out of fuel in transit in interstellar space? I mean, I suppose that's a danger, isn't it? Because you've mentioned gas. Uh, refueling by skimming gas giants and stuff, but you presumably you could maroon yourself in space. Um, okay, so Dan says the arrival distance to all stars is the same, so you can visually see the difference in size. Okay, so well that's going to be amazing, isn't it? Because if you come out near what's the what's the big one? UV Scutum or something like that. I mean, it's just going to look like a vertical wall, isn't it? Uh, if you if you see something like that, because Sirius is what about three or four times as big as the Sun in dimensions, I think. Or Beetlejuice, for example, is Beetlejuice in the game? A Beetle no, Beetlejuice can't. Not yet. Okay, I was going to say Beetlejuice is four hundred light years away, so that's not going to work, is it? Because uh, you haven't done it yet. Uh, I'm just trying to think of any big stars that are. It maybe maybe close. Um, so. Um, uh, don't say it three times either. No, we definitely, we definitely will do that. So, is the I seem to have lost the ability to maneuver the ship from the keyboard. It might be because I'm in a mode or something. Oh, my character jumped into the corner for some reason. Uh, probably trying to get away from this massive, massive star. <laughs> okay, so so that's cool. So that nebula that is there. Um, Dan, is that is that a real nebula? I.e., it exists in the real universe. Let's just can I? There we go. Let's once again move away from the star. Let's engage the drive. Let's power up the drive a little bit. And in a moment, we should see. Things start to move. There we go. Boom, it's exhilarating. Let's get away from Sirius for a moment. It's a test nebula, so it's a, okay, so it's entirely fake. But it's it's okay, so it's it's a demo of technology that um isn't being produced like I know it's I don't know, is it four hundred, seven hundred? I know it's hundreds of. Um, uh, Okay, so it's a test nebula. Okay, so it, it doesn't actually. Okay, but it gives us an idea of the sort of thing that we might be able to experience. Okay, so let's let's get to go. I mean, it's a big star, Sirius, isn't it? There we go, pulling away from it now. So that leaves us. Okay, let's shut down the drive again. Bring it to a standstill. Nice. I like the way that works, actually. Okay, switch off the zoom, switch off the drive. Um, let's can I can I can I find it again? Is is the question? Uh, <laughs> okay, so there's a there's a blueness over there. Is that is that the same one we were looking at? I'm not sure if it is actually. Um, the sunbeams streaming in the lounge windows look amazing on bright. 
Okay, so let's let's do that. Let's just pan around. So, okay, so the Blue Nebula is an open cluster. Okay, some people look streaming in lounge windows. So let's let's park it at a slightly wreckish angle. That'll do. Let's go and see what that looks like. Um, I love that the visual effects are really nice. Um, uh, you're only on gob mode here, Dan. I test nebula before you create the real ones. I mean, <laughs> exactly. What are we going to do today? Mm, I'm just creating a nebula, as you do. Uh, okay, let's just have a look at the light coming in the back of the ship here because I like things like that. Eye candy is so important in exploration games. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look. So from up here, we're getting. That is really nice, isn't it? So we can sort of stand here and look down on the lounge. I like the way actually the oh you can actually see light beams. So there's a sort of you put a slight haze in the atmosphere inside the ship to kind of give us effect of the really really strong. I like that. And you can actually see it tinting the glass and all sorts of things. So is that something that the Unreal um, the hazy like yeah? So that's that's a lovely effect, isn't it? It gives you. There's a little bit of dust in the atmosphere. Oh yeah, look at that! And it's sort of the exposure changes as as I'm walking around in it. So presumably when I'm standing in it, looking back the other way, I'm kind of sort of squint. Yeah, okay. Um, that's really nice. So if you're in a place with a really really bright light source, but it's equally I can hang back and then look through. That's just yeah, it's glorious. Yeah. Um, and starlight hitting the, the hull exactly so it's all bouncing around doing doing stuff isn't it really nice um presumably you could also code these windows to shut her down if necessary if it was things um presumably it's blocking all the harmful <laughs> ultraviolet radiation and stuff like that uh which is very nice okay so let's go back maybe let's move a little bit further out again I do like the fact that you can navigate from outside the ship a little bit let's gauge the drive again let's speed up a few times let's just get away from the glare of the star it's gonna make it easier to see things isn't it um, though it should be polarization controls behind the bar <laughs> perfect place <laughs> Maybe with a password control to stop people messing about when they've had perhaps one too many space beers. Um, okay, so let's accelerate a little bit. There we go. Okay, I love the way it, we can move like that around the solar systems using FTL technology. Really nice, that is. Okay, so the blue and the blue is an open cluster. So are these real? Oh, there's the other cluster there. Look. There's another nebula. Now, that nebula to me looks very, very appealing. So I'm going to try and bank the ship around and head in that direction. Ooh, there we go. Okay. Let's tilt up a little bit. I don't know how far away that nebula is, of course, but let's let's go and see what one of Dan's godlike nebulas is like there we go is that that's about a course we can check that we can't uh oh let's turn off the polarization filters it's just going to make sirius a bit too bright but we are heading in the right direction so if i let's do a little bit of manual control now right we're heading in the right direction let's pitch up a time i love the way you can fly manually Oh look! Actually, oh look at that! The, the ship eclipse. The ship's hull is eclipsed. Look at that! The glare of the star can be obscured by the hull, and you can actually see it rising up the windows. <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> really nice. I like that. Just little things like that that really make you feel like you're there. Okay, so let's go for max. Maximum power. Now oh, that should. Shuffle serious past. Oh, beautiful. Really rather quickly. Okay, now 
Okay, so we are heading towards this nebula, but I don't know how far away it is. Um, so we are traveling now at uh, 2.6 million C, which is pretty damn quick, actually. Uh, so this is a good example of how you can fly anywhere in any direction entirely at will. So that's just freedom to actually explore the galaxy, but not just jump around, but actually fly there. Oh, that is just generally exciting. Okay, so we don't have a target, of course. We're just literally flying into space now. Um, the open clusters are all generic blue at the moment. I haven't added the code to make them properly procedural. The yellow-green nebula is prettier. Okay, so this one, this is the pretty nebula. <laughs> so, I, uh, how, Dan, how far away is it in light years? How, how long can we expect to take it to get there, I suppose, is... Yeah, we're traveling at maximum speed now, but I mean, it looks like it could be 100 light years away. Who knows? Okay, I think you're looking about 15 to 20 minutes to get there. Recently updated the maintenance tunnels on GDEX, so you could waste time checking them out. Okay, let's. <laughs> okay, so we're, we are heading based on my eyeball thing of the of the nebula. It's going to okay, so that's I mean, it's going to take us 15 20 minutes to get there. So, um, that's a lot of light years, actually. I suppose we can find out by pointing back at Sol how far we've come. So, okay, let's do that. So, the ship is doing its thing. It's traveling through space in the direction of a nebula. Nice. Uh, the nebula is about 40 light years wide. Okay, so we can see it in front of us, but it's like 15 minutes away at 2.6 million light years. Um, yeah, 2.6 million times the speed of light. Isn't light speed just so slow? It's, it's so annoying. Um, so, right, okay, so it's 17 minutes, so at about half past nine, we need to come back. Now, doesn't this give you a feeling that you're looking, I love the way, you, what you've done, it's a very simple um, warp animation, but it, it kind of works, doesn't it? It's, you know, the ship is moving, it's doing something. You can see, look, there's a star just there, slowly creeping past the viewer, so that's a nearby star, but the backdrop of stars, it's, it's hard to see their relative motion. Gives you a lovely sense of traveling through the galaxy. Oh, I just love that. I really love that. I will add a toggle for the space clouds if anyone wants to turn it off so they can just see stars. So that's a nice idea as well. I'd always have it on because it feels like, maybe you could have a slider of intensity perhaps. Because um, it's nice to have the motion, but it would also be nice to be staring out at the stars as well. Um, particularly when you get the actual you know all the all all the, all of those ones in there. So as you know, oh, now I've got to go down to G Dick. Let's just have a look out the back windows while we're in motion because I don't think I've done that before. So look, there's the rear, looking over the rear of the ship, and you know there's there's all the home planets that we love, way behind us, receding in the rearview mirror. <laughs> awesome. Um, right, so G Dick is down the stairs. And we've already talked about there will be some lifts. Um, in these cavities here, which, well, they, they actually, it looks like you've created the lift, but presumably it doesn't work yet. It's just a, it's just a kind of placeholder for lift. Uh, but that, you know, you can see how the lifts made sense. Oh, okay. So, and it's a subtle effect, but you'll notice the clouds are red shifted at the furthest distance. Did I didn't notice that. That's the sort of thing I should have noticed. Bad me. So is it? So hang on. Red, blue shift and red shift. So red shift is when it's moving away from us. Oh yeah, look. So, the clouds are redshift at the furthest. Yeah, yeah, okay, so there's a slight redshift at the back and the blue shift at the front. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Yes, because of course redshifting as they're receding from you. Um, I, I don't know whether that works with FTL tech, but you know the fact that it's kind of included as a thing is, is really nice. So let's, let's let's put ourselves in third person view for a moment. I quite like this looking over the shoulder aspect here. So this is D deck, E deck. So you said what do you say? Um, 
the maintenance tiles on GDEC. Okay, so that's that's down the bottom. Okay, so those are the kind of they're not they're not the Jeffreys tubes. <laughs> okay, now we can't go directly down to GDEC, can we? We have to go into part of the ship. I think the access is from the reactor room itself. Which is the entrance is here around the central core somewhere. There we go. So through here, and then we have to go down a level through the, the reactor room. So for those of you who haven't seen, there's a fusion reactor in the center of the ship, which um, is doing some stuff, and it's powered by helium and helium three and deuterium. Not quite sure what the reaction is. Um, so there's coolant, deuterium, and helium three. Um, so deuterium is what? A deuterium is hydrogen, isn't it? Or a, f a form of hydrogen. Um, so is it is it converting? Is it fusion? It's converting hydrogen into helium, uh, or uh, deuterium into helium. What's it doing? Um, reactor or the cryo room? Okay, I can't remember where the cryo room is. I just remember that there was this door down here. Um, okay, so it, okay, so deuterium deuterium of yeah is is hydrogen of one neutron. Okay, yeah. Um, so it's an isotope, that's right, isotope of hydrogen. Um, so now this is GDEC. Okay, so where are the maintenance corridors? Oh, okay. Okay, so Dan says deuterium helium 3 fusion creates just helium and some stray bits. Okay, <laughs> neutrons, I presume. Um, Okay, so you're fusing deuterium with helium three, that just creates helium, and you get a lot of energy as a byproduct. Okay, so that's how the starship works. Okay, so these are nicely illuminated now. This wasn't like this before. And then there's these cables, which are connected at various places. It's a mammoth job modeling all this stuff, and it's so big. And then there's, you know, there's these control panels and things um, that do stuff, or well, this will do stuff. You can hear, I can hear some buzzing sounds now. It sounds like there's some high voltage cables I really shouldn't shouldn't be touching. Uh, <laughs> so this bit of the ship here is still under construction, but. I love the bulkhead arrangements there. Look, there's actually some little cubby holes and space and stuff. Oh, now I've just fallen down off the stairs. I can get back up again, that's all right. The ship is actually, considering how it doesn't feel that large in some dimensions, it's, it's an enormous vessel. There's so much space in here for, for things. I love that buzzing noise. Buzz. High voltage. Okay, so, um, okay, so it's a neutronic, so new neutron radiation at all. At all. Okay. Um, so this is this is <laughs> this is Orkney Shorn's area. I don't know a great deal about fusion. Um, oh, I'm right. slightly glitched there. So I can ragdoll over it, can I? By pressing X. What does X do? I think she's broken her legs, poor girl. Not quite sure. <laughs> nope. I'll give it up. <laughs> I feel she's being a bit of a diva at the moment. Um, there is an act to it. I'm not, <laughs> not sure if I'm doing it. What am I supposed to sort of run an X? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh, she definitely broke the legs, poor girl. Um, okay, so she managed, she managed to do it. Um, okay, so for, down through a curve. So look, there's massive, some masses of space in here for um, stuff. Okay, here we go again. I'm gonna, so we're gonna have to run across and whew, ragdoll herself. So what, what does X do under normal circumstances? Does it just sort of lie down? No, it's just kind of faint. <laughs> it's, it's basically 
She's very flexible at the moment. Um, okay, that's very cool. Um, break, break your back, break, break. There's, 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 there's definitely some Roman Lanale going on. So yes, it's sort of just, you know, pretend to be dead is is what the X key does, um, which is interesting. Uh, there'll be a lot of that in the bar, yes. <laughs> um, do with these base beers. Oh, okay, I like that. Okay, so um, go get a beer. I'll get, uh, uh, actually, I've got to get back into the engine room. Well, not the engine room, the reactor room. Go up a level, because I can't remember my way through the cryo area. Um, let's get back up there. Excellent game for playing Dead Lions. I think that should be all part of, of a basic Starship training. I like the fact that you can actually do it when you're running along. So if I just do it now, she sort of goes and just <laughs> chucks herself on the ground. Um, poor girl. Shouldn't be doing mean things to her. Right, let's get back. Okay, so that that's very nice. I like the, It's coming along very nicely, the inside of the spaceship. Um, I do like that. It's got a nice clean aesthetic it's not super duper high tech but it's also not it's not you know it's not sort of star trek and uh, not, not star trek it's not sort of star wars grungy space either it's you know it's clean and it's you know it's, <laughs> it's a nice place to be um so so yes presumably if you had a bottle of wine then there'd be quite a lot of this going on wouldn't there just <laughs> passed out at the bar um, but um, never mind right <laughs> behave yourself let's go back to let's go back to the bridge now take one look again at the back my friend let's have a look at this red shift again very subtle it's it is subtle but there's a there's a subtle red shift at the back of the ship where we're traveling through space there let's go out to the front And compare and contrast at the front of the ship and see how we're looking. Now that nebula is definitely bigger. Oh yeah, there is a blueness to it. Yeah. That nebula is still a fair way off. We've probably done a fair bit of distance, but um, it's still a fair way off. And then we're just picking up M-class star, so we're kind of in uncharted space as far as the game's concerned now. That's that's quite good. Remember, you can also customise the ship interiors with F. We should do that. Okay, so we've got a little way to go before we get to that nebula. Let's let's have a play around with... Um, I love the way this is updating itself as well. So this is a really, really useful tactical display. Look, you can actually see the ship moving in the middle there. So if we can actually walk inside the, the hologram, and there's the ship traveling, look at that. We are actually in the scanner radius that the thing can show. We can see our movement. That's really nice. That's really nice. Will the nebula interfere with the sense? Well, I'm, I'm curious to see how the nebula shows up on that that 3D scanner, if it, if it will show up at all. Um, we'll find out. So customizing the ship interiors, okay, F3, so walls. So is this is this color? So I'm I'm a big fan of green. Oh look at that, yeah. So we can have a <laughs> have a British racing green starship. <laughs> Excellent. I think British racing green is gonna be allowed about that sort of look at that. There we go. Um so we now have a British racing green starship. <laughs> That's actually quite moody, isn't it? Dark green starship. Um, not sure that's going to catch on, but uh, well, that's quite that's quite cool. So that's the flooring. Okay, so we can we can change the floor and the UI panels and the lighting. Uh, I've got a feeling actually that a dark green interior of the starship is kind of not really going to work all that well. So let's reset that back. Um, can we have Tartan for engineering, please? <laughs> um, okay, so I've sort of set that back to standard. All right, so the flooring can also be changed. So let's have a sort of slightly, I fancy a sort of, 
Oh, that's that color. Okay. Okay. So there's there's a primary floor and a secondary floor. So we can have sort of. Oh yeah, that's quite nice, isn't it? So we can have a slightly subtle, and actually that looks like a slightly. I don't know. No, that's not a good color. Um, yeah, hey, that's quite nice. <laughs> idea of customizing customize customize interior decorate um it is quite yeah well that's quite I'm not sure about the yellow actually I don't like I could spend hours sort of playing around with this maybe I'll sort of that's quite nice I can't like that that looks that I must admit that's probably quite next gen -y, isn't it I can't remember what the floor looks like in there for the original enterprise but that um that's quite nice um so the UI panels we need to I need to go and find a UI panel. Where are they? They're down. Probably downstairs, aren't they? Oh, I've gone a long way around. I quite like that. Is there a UI panel? Where's the nearest UI panel? I think it's probably down the bottom of the stairwell down in engineering. Let's go down there. She's very fit, this, this young lady. I suppose you have to be to be on the Starship. Um, it doesn't get puffed out at all. I'll be exhausted running up and down these stairs. Right, this is engineering. So there's a panel here. Does that mean, is that one of the ones that we're talking about? So UI background is currently a lightish color. So if I change that to red, is that? Oh, it doesn't update that. Okay. Uh, oh, it's the bridge. Fit but runs a bit weird. Oh, it's the bridge panels. Okay, not that one. <laughs> Poor girl's got to run all the way back up again. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, she's up. She's incredibly fit and up for it. There we go. It's good exercise for her as well. We need to be on the bridge anyway, don't we, to uh, make sure we don't go straight through this nebula and out the other side. What's nice about this is I feel like I'm, I'm really getting the hang of the layout of the ship. Okay, so let's sit at the sensors. How, how are we doing nebula-wise? Oh, look at that, it's taking shape. Look at that. That looks insanely good already. We're still not even close. Um, let's sit down. So when you say UI, do you mean, do you mean this UI? Check the helm. Okay. Oh, I see the helm. Okay, so the helm is one that's working. Oh, I see. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that that colour has definitely changed. So if we wanted it to be a strong red, oh, that's the UI background. Okay, so there's the UI foreground. So. Uh, okay, nice. Okay, so you can customize that. Looks quite nice. No, we don't want clearly don't want pink. Maybe we just black. Does that work? Take the color out. Okay, yeah, I quite like that as well. Okay, so yeah, so we get British really grace and green dashboard, <laughs> or we can kind of make it kind of Audi dashboard. There we go. Uh, <laughs> nice. Okay, so it's kind of like what you could do in your car. You can kind of change everything to, to kind of match. I like that. That's nice. And then you've also got lighting. So is that generic lighting? So let's just go into here. So the lighting panel is is that is that the roof panel? So if I make it quite a blue, right, that's not changing it there. Lighting is just the alert strips. Okay, so not the main lighting at the moment. Okay. Oh yeah, look, they're up there. Okay, so you've kind of got that illumination there, so we can make that. Oh, okay, that's well, that's quite nice. So you can kind of give it a soft red glow. That looks a bit kind of imperial now, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> we'll make it green. Cool. Oh, that's quite nice. There we go. 
Actually, that's a horrible color to go with that red. Kind of need to pick out the red. Let's go with a sort of soft pink. There we are. Pink spaceship. Now that looks ridiculous. <laughs> Defaults. <laughs> I think I'm not an interior designer, so I think I'm going to go with well, whatever you recommend there, Dan. Um, but it's, it's nice. I mean, customize your Starship, right? Yeah, really nice. Green lights, somebody's suggesting. Let's let's have some green lights, okay? Um, and then you can sort of make them a bit more subdued. That's quite nice. Yeah, okay. So there we go. We've got green lights. Um, no, that just 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 looks wrong. <laughs> I think your defaults are. By the way, I think your defaults are very, very sensible indeed. Let's let's stick with the defaults. <laughs> okay, so how are we doing? Nebulize. Okay, so we should be looking up. It definitely it's definitely getting. I love. I look at me. It's growing on the screen. In a really nice. Kind of way. Look, there's a couple of stars there at the top right. Can you see those that are just slowly shifting past the the viewer? So let's just go and sit in the helm officer's chair again. Let's jump into the external camera view. I think we've already gone. Oh, okay, so there's an M class star we're going past. So the nebula is growing. That looks really nice as well. But it, and it's a three-dimensional. Um, <laughs> you sound like my ex-wife constantly changing the colours of things. Um, I think it's just updating the hue. Okay. Um, Dan, Drew's getting the hang of the layout of the ship. Is that a new ship for next week? <laughs> so it's a fully volumetric. This is this is very exciting. It's a, a volumetric nebula, so you can't you can just. And it, okay, so it's definitely beginning to grow on the screen now. So I'm just going to adjust the course slightly, so we can go straight through the middle. Because as as we know from Voyager, there's there's coffee in that there nebula. <laughs> and to to watch the nebula expand and the, the traceries of gas and stuff coming past is is insanely nice i do like, and it's got you know it's got occluded what looked like to be kind of occluded areas and dark patches and oh i just want to get in there and explore it's just really really good um okay so we we are still closing on that nebula it's it's beginning to take up you know a real sense in front of the ship now which is which is really nice so it does handle density and dust tendrils and things. Wow. Okay. We will get there when we get there. We're not going <laughs> to. Glenn, you're sitting in the back seat. Okay. It's subtle, isn't it? It just shows. I mean, this really shows how big the galaxy is, doesn't it? Because, I mean, we're traveling here at 2.6 million times the speed of light. And it's, <laughs> it's still not fast enough. Um, if you look at the hollow display, you might spot a black hole drifting past. Okay, so how would we recognize a black hole? Would you, would you just say it? Okay, it might be worth us just keeping an eye out then. So these are all M class stars. OK class, G class. So somebody, if we saw a G class star up there, we might want to go and it will it will say black hole, but visually it's a dark spot with a white outline. OK, we'll keep an eye out. If anybody spots a black hole, that would be quite cool. I love the way the stars are streaming past on the hologram. Oh, it's such a good way of representing the progress. So presumably all this stuff here is procedurally generated stuff at this point because we're quite a long way beyond well, we must be hundred well, I don't know how far we are, we must be hundreds of light years by now. We can stand in the hologram and watch stuff go past. Really, really like that effect. There's the Magellan. 
Uh, well, actually, that's it. Uh, oh, it's renamed the show. Oh, of course, I've set it back to default, haven't I? Oh, I better fix that. Uh, <laughs> I forgot they would do that. Let's change, <laughs> let's change it back. Um, there we go. So that should update again. There we go. Yes, there we are. We're back to being the Eurydice. Nice. Um, so it's all it's all procedural. It actually uses a grayscale density map to determine stellar density in the planet. Oh wow. Okay. So I'd love to see a black hole. So the, so the galaxy is the correct shape and has genuine arm and inter arm region. There's one. Oh, whoa, 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 where, where? Where did you see one? You managed to spot it. Try going to the 50. Where, where is it, Joe? Zoe? You, <laughs> you spotted it. Where is it? I can't see it. Orkney Sean says this is my it is isn't it it really is just oh, I can't see the black hole drifting just in front of you I thought I saw it oh right okay we might have just gone past it I might have missed that let's try it let's try the 50 light year view that Dan suggests we are coming up on that nebula bit by bit um, there we go so we're now 50 light years out okay so it's now how are we going to spot them Are they did you say black it's a dark spot with a white outline okay so we're now scanning 50 light years in radius looking for a dark spot with a white outline my god it's full of stars <laughs> it is isn't it um, what I love about having procedural galaxies is even I don't know what's out there I mean, <laughs> that is the amazing thing about procedural stuff isn't it um, is what what is going to be out there? That is a that's, that's a beautiful thing. I love I really really like this idea of having the hologrammatic user interface like this to to sort of visualise your surroundings. It's, it's it's a stroke of absolute genius that is. Um, hope we can we can stumble across a black hole that would be that would be insane so eventually you'll be able to click a 3d object in the display to target oh so that would be really nice so you're able to just go like that and click and then boom that is your that is your that would be amazing so if you see something interesting oh there's a g-type star the first one we've seen for ages you could like zoom in on it um so that's that's amazing uh, so look the nebula is very much growing in size in front of us it's still a long way off, isn't it? It's taking. We've probably been flying for half an hour now. At, at maximum speed. And that nebula is slowly increasing its size. Let's keep an eye out over here. Oh, oh, hang on! Look, there's one there. Is that is that one there? Yes. Look, there's one. So how do we? Okay. How do we? How do we navigate to that then? Let's let's switch off the. I, I found a black hole. Let's 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 stop moving for a moment. Disengage the FTL. Okay, power down. Engines off. We've come 145 light years. Okay, so we're now stationary, but there is over here. Oh, there's the was. There it is. There, almost directly in front of the ship there a black hole okay so that's one try and point the ship to get closer right okay so this is going to be a little bit tricky where is it relative to the ship i can still see it there okay so this is it's not far off directly in front of us is it looking at that so where's the ship the ship is up there
There's the black hole. Oh, it'd be so nice if we just right click and target, but we can't do that right now. Okay, so <laughs> where is it again? Okay, so this is going to be this is quite hard to do. There's the black hole. I'm just trying to see where it is. It's it's almost it's almost directly in front of us. So I think. Um, So we need to get a bit closer. It feels like we're almost in the right orientation. So let's engage the FTL to max again. Engage. Ah, no, no, what are you doing? Disengage. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, well, I find it at the sensor target. Disengage, 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 disengage. <laughs> Bad, bad flying there by by Captain Drew. Right. Now I can't see the ship, of course. So there's the. There's a nip of the. Okay. Let's try that again. So about my bad piloting skills there. Right. I just literally want to fly in that direction so that nibble is looking really rather pretty now isn't it uh, bolt <laughs> yeah okay um, right clear clear target I don't want to use that have I still got the, the black hole yeah the black hole is virtually there it is there it's almost in front of us so I'm hopeful that if we which way is the ship oriented? Ship's oriented sideways on. It's heading in the right direction. Um, so I think if I can make the ship fly straight, so clear target. I just want to engage FTL. I don't. I don't want to use auto navigation. That's what that was the mistake I made. I just want to go forward. think yes it's accelerating on its own good okay let's go back and follow our progress against the black hole if I can get it like you say into a 20 light year zone there it is there we're now accelerating again now watch the blob on the hollow display <laughs> now I've been, I've been reassured that we are entirely invulnerable <laughs> <laughs> we may not get to the nebula today we may be we're going to be sidetracked by this black hole i fear so maybe the nebula's next week explore the nebula so this is what's amazing i mean like yeah we've been playing this game for um you know almost two hours and it's just fascinating just to travel around space and just enjoy the idea of flying through the galaxy Captain Drew Wager on a quest to nowhere. No brakes, no clue, and no stopping him. <laughs> okay, so there, there's the black hole, which is kind of now. I could probably rotate. What's 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 the pack? Oh, oh, I can't do that when I'm standing up. So there we go. The black, black hole is is now getting closer to the ship. Uh, there it is. So looking at that, the ship needs to pan down a little bit, I think. Judging on that, let's try, let's try doing that. I'm going to put the bow down a little bit and see if that puts us in the right direction. A little bit of manual navigating. Has that pitched us? Where's the black hole gone now? There it is, there it is, it's moved slightly. So it's virtually, virtually ahead of the ship, I think. Okay, so we're heading in the right direction. <laughs> I think, I'm very, very keen to get into a black hole. Okay, as it were. Um, okay, now I've probably overdone it a little bit looking at the angle of the ship. 
we are closing on it. Okay, it also helps to reduce the center range as you get close to reduce the clutter. So looking at that, I think I now need to bank up the ship a little bit. Let's climb, if that's the right word for spaceship. Let's just bring it back up a little bit. There we go. Okay, it's literally there. It does look like we're heading directly for it. Let's let's try and bring it down to 40 light years and see if it's still visible. Can anyone see the black hole? There it is, there it is, it's still there. So there's the black hole. We're still heading in the right way. We are heading towards it, which is encouraging. So what, what range do we have to be to target? 20 light years. Um, the thing about black holes, right, is that they're black. The thing about space is it's black. <laughs> the thing about the grit on the scalloscope. Um, cue lots of running from left to right as the ship hits the black hole. Um, it's coming into range. I reckon we might be in 30 light years range of it. I quite like this manual. I mean, I know this isn't how it would work either, but in some ways this is quite good fun, triangulating your position. Look, look, there it is. It's just come into the 30 light year range. And it's still, we're still kind of on the right course. We're definitely heading in the right direction. Okay, so there's the black hole. So the manual navigation of a starship by... <laughs> 20 light years when it starts drawing labels. Brilliant, okay, so we should be close enough here, I think, given the trajectory I've set, to get that. It should pass with, even on this course, it should pass within 10 light years of us. Dead reckoning navigation, maybe. Yeah. So this is this is. So I mean, this actually could be a dynamic, Dan. Thinking about it, is if your, you know, if your navigation computer gets busted, it's still possible to navigate, but you have to do it by the seat of your pants. Hey, it's it could be a thing because it's, it's actually, a quite fun little intellectual stroke skill stroke spatial awareness, exercise that I'm doing here, which is. A challenge just navigating in three-dimensional space trying to get close to an object um, I quite like it <laughs> right live tracking of the black hole right so um, there is the black hole where's the ship the ship is now from the perspective of this hologrammatic display quite a long way above the black hole great multiplayer opportunities people trying to help navigate yeah um, what would be quite good, actually, Dan, from a perspective of the holograms, is whether you could you project, have options maybe to project the plane of the starship onto this thing, and we could have like degrees and you know kind of alt azimuth display or some kind. So um, that <laughs> just, that is possible. Yay! <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I'm thinking from navigational perspective. It would be really good fun to say, okay, it's it's at I don't know. You know, 20 degrees off the starboard bow, uh, but, you know, our rotational vector's wrong or whatever it happens to be. Right, I wonder if we are within, this is Black Hole Hunting live on Drew Wager stream. So that's the black hole there. I think we might be in 20 light years. Let's give it a whirl. I'll oh, just, not the tablet, right, 20 light years. Have we got, have we got the black hole? There, look, there it is, there's the black hole. It's just appeared. Now that means we should, right, be able to target it. I've just dropped my tablet on the floor, but who cares about that when there's a black hole? Um, can I, can I find the black hole? Where is it? Where's the black hole? There's too many things. Since it's in range, it's probably a good idea to stop the ship, isn't it? Uh, where's the black hole? It's definitely there. Okay, so it's in it's in scanner range. Let's let's switch the engines off so we don't get don't, it doesn't accidentally go past us. Let's disengage. FTL. Look at that nebula. That looks amazing as well. It was there. It just went past it. Okay, so right. I'm just switching the engines off so we don't lose it since I know it's in sensor range there it is there so we know it's you know it's here right engines are off let's 
go and target it. Maybe I scan past it too fast. Okay, 123 objects are in sensor range. I'm just trying to roll that down really gently. There it is, there it is. Black hole. We have we found it. Okay. Right, so can we scan the target? We can. Okay, a black hole with an average temperature of 5,000 Kelvin and a radius of 6,000 kilometers. The star's habitable zone extends from... It's got habitable zone. Wow. Okay. <laughs> right, so we should be able to send that to the helm now. What does a black hole look like, Dan? Have you have you modeled it? Was it just a is it just a hole in space? Don't tell us, we'll find out. That's we're exploring, that's what we do. Um right, so I should be able to use sensor target. It's fourteen light years away, that sounds about right. Black hole navigation target, we found it. Oh, what a cool game. Like down a window. <laughs> I'll stop asking cyclists. Right, engage. Right. We're heading for a black hole, my friends. There we go. Look, look at that nebula. That looks insanely good. Of course, all this time we've been getting closer and closer and closer. We haven't really been looking at the nebula because <laughs> we've been hunting this black hole. That nebula looks amazing. Oh, I could play this game for years. That is a very, very nice nebula. It's all tenderly and space wibbly wobbly. It's a technical term. <laughs> For those of you who don't know. Um, we're right at the outer edge of the nebula. Oh, look, the nebula's moving. Look, we are, look. You can see the nebula shifting in the background, particularly on the left-hand side. Oh. So that's exploring a nebula, is this, when you can actually navigate through it. Okay, so we're actually gonna be able to whack through the nebula. We're going to have to keep the stream going a little bit longer so we can pop through the nebula. Um, the good thing about FTL drives is you can escape a black hole. Okay, so the black hole is now 11 light years away. Look at that nebula. It's all 3D and volumetric. That's insanely nice. And as you flesh out all the kind of space science -y dynamics of the game, um, being able to take samples or <laughs> we love it, love it, love it. Sold. Just, just finish it, Dan. Come on, hurry up. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> that nebula's gorgeous. The way it's unfolding as we, as we pop through. Because there's a, you know, there's a chunk of it down there that's not connected to the main part. You want to go and see. Yeah, you know, is there going to be some star? F is there, is there going to be some star formation going on in there and, and stuff? <laughs> I wonder if we can find a a star. Well, we probably can. Does the does the nebula show up on the hologram? If a black hole's already distorting space time, I don't know what what does you know. Have you done any? Well, we'll find out when we see. I can see something appearing there. What does what does a black hole look like? If a black hole is already distorting space time, you engage a space distorting drive. <laughs> What does it do? Well, I have no idea, Glenn, but it's going to be great fun finding out. <laughs> that nebula is amazing. Look, you can see through it and everything, which, of course, you would be able to. That is an insane nebula. Look at that. It's all volumetric. That that just looks amazingly amazing. Haunted Loaf is quite right. All matter distorts space-time. Right, we're... OK, the black hole is now 2.5. They're coming in. What does a black hole look like? The pillars of Dan's creation. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's got that. It has got that pillars of creation vibe to it. It's really nice. It looks like a long exposure photograph of, of, of a nebula. Right, we're now getting close to the black hole. I don't know if this is a big black hole or a small black hole. Normally you measure it in solar masses, don't you? I don't know. I can't remember if that showed up on the. What does a black hole look like? Here we go. They're, they're pretty small, so. Are we going to see? Oh, hang on. There's something there. Whoa! Look at that! Oh my God! You actually modelled a 
an event horizon and an accretion disk. Oh, that is that is oh. Dan, you have exceeded yourself again. Oh well, look at that. We just got to. We just got to. That's that's the view. Oh, that's the view. I tell you what. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually probably stop the stream exactly there. We're just gonna go to the bar because there's so. I want to give this nebula proper justice. So we're definitely definitely gonna do a bit more streaming next week on this. Let's just angle the ship around so that, that is the view from the rear of the ship. Because that's just oh, wow. Okay, so let's let's just quickly do this the scanner. So star system scanner mode. Let's go down to one AU because we must be pretty close to this thing. Does it show anything? Okay, it just says black hole there. Okay, because it's quite a sm relatively small object dimensionally. Um, we are we are kind of in the nebula, though, aren't we? Because we're looking. That's the front of the ship. We're looking through the nebula. The nebula is all around us. There's the accretion. <laughs> it's the accretion disk in space. Ah, oh, oh. wow. So if we go down to here, oh look at that! Look at the view out the window. Imagine seeing that on your starship. Outside view of Nebula. Uh, I pick up my bit. Yeah, actually, I need to tilt that. That's not. We haven't quite got the right angle yet. Hang on, bear with me. Uh, I need to angle the ship <laughs> for the best effect. Um, it's important. Yeah, you've got, to get, you've got to get these things right. Outside view of Nebula, please. Yeah, hang on. Let me. Okay, let me just pop into the the seat and let's let's get the get the ship at the right angle. Accretion disk. It's just oh. right. Okay, so let's get let's. I need to tilt that up a little bit. No, nope. that way. I think that's going to be. That's like a scene. What's the film? Disney's The Black Hole. It's just it's just like the scene from that, isn't it? So this is the. I'm just going to pan around for you then, Sea Dweller. Um, there's there there's the nebula. We we saw it moving around us. And look up there. That I mean, you just the fact that we can in the, you know in the next stream we can turn the ship around and actually fly through that structure to get a real sense of its three Dness. Is that a word three <laughs> Dness? Um, you know what I mean? It it's it's. Oh, look at that detail. I mean, you can't see where I'm pointing, but look at the detail. Just off to the left of the ship there. Um, Definitely need a crew. There should be some helm controls, yeah, so we can just tweak the orientation of the ship when we're in the uh, we're in the bar. Uh, <laughs> that does look amazing, and the fact that it's actually a three D structure that we can we can send the ship through is 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 next level amazingness. Um, and look at that, we're just looking out of the windows of the ship there, and you can see tendrils of nebulosity. There's a black hole in the background. What does it look like through the ship's side windows here? Let's say in the captain. This isn't the captain's room, is it? Or is it? Which room is it? It's just somebody's room. But look, look at that. That's just amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. <sighs> All right, it's time to. So next week we are going to we are going to explore Dan's pillars of creation. Um, oh, look at the view. <gasps> so hang on, we've come in. Uh, I do just want to navigate around that black hole very quickly, so I know <laughs> that is. I'm just going. I'm just going to take a moment to admire that view, um, which which is insane. But that's a volumetric accretion disk. So we've got to since we're here we've got to just move oh, sorry, I'm gonna, this, this, 
<laughs> it moves everything. Um, it's, let's just turn the ship around. And can we fly across the plane of the accretion disk? And since we're invulnerable, let's, around there's a glow from it as well so let's set ourselves I'm gonna go down there let's fly engage the FTL drive there we go and let's just give it a nudge right there's the range coming down let's pan the ship around and let's just fly across the arc of flying inside the black hill okay so let's what have you done gravitational lensing and stuff like that let's do it let's do a reasonably fast pass past the black hole if that makes sense because presumably with an FTL drive we should be kind of immune to a black hole I don't know I mean what what what, what I mean does anybody know what would happen to an Alcubierre warp drive <laughs> Near a black hole? I mean, I don't know. It's lens, but only the black hole itself, not the space behind it yet. Okay. Look at that. It does look insanely good. Is it? Oh, is it immune? <laughs> We're going to rip a hole in the fabric of space time and destroy the entire universe. Um, curses can't make next week. Oh, we're going to have to explore the nebula. Well, it, it's, it's all being recorded, um, Commander Sea Dweller, so you will be able to catch up on YouTube. That looks immense. Okay, so it's not doing gravitational lensing of the space behind, which it obviously would, but... Um, oh, look, it's... Yeah, look, it's distorting, look. The, the, back, the, the back part of the accretion disk is curving upwards. It's exactly what it should do. Oh, look at that. Yes, 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 yes. So we're going to... Should be able to... And they're all different shapes and sizes. And look, we're going to cross the plane of the accretion disk in a moment. What does that look like? Here we go. Oh, look at that. There's the plane of the... Oh, that looks insanely good. Oh, yes. You can see as the maths, can't, the maths tries to go, where are you? <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, it's just staggering. Oh, yeah, I mean, the, the black holes in the dangerous aren't are just, are just wrong <laughs> in, in so many ways. Um, that is insane. Let's, oh, we, we've got to go past and do that again. So flybys of black holes have now become a thing. Uh, let's go a little bit closer this time. Let's let's tack through very close to the event horizon. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> this is will be a serious screenshot. To it. it will. I mean, just but the the thing is, this is exploring real astronomy, getting a feel for what it might be like. I can see where you're going with this. It's just oh, and to think that you could kind of park your ship here and do some some space sciencey stuff. It's just glorious. Look at this black hole. Oh, it's creepy, isn't it? Oh, because you know you're near some sort of unbelievable, you know, physics, basically. Um, eventually, getting that close is going to have some serious consequences on the ship. For now, you can do it. Oh, look at oh, kind of like the event horizon there. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to get... I mean, it makes sense that these things should be dangerous, right? Because, I mean... <laughs> it's a black hole, we're going to think. Um, wow. That just looks so amazing. Fly in slowly, it gets weird. Okay, so let's, let's back off the throttle a little bit. If that's the right word for a, for a starship. Oh, look, you've even got weird motion in the... Right, let's turn around again. We're going to fly straight through the middle this time. I hope the Eurydice will survive this. 
okay we're now heading directly I think into the black hole <laughs> no I do not mean D throttle on to live now stop it okay so we're now heading in cue interstellar music yeah exactly Disney time <laughs> what happens <sighs> I'm going to take it right down its throat. I think I feel we need some dramatic music playing at this point, Dan, as well. Uh, <laughs> Elite Dangerous meets Star Citizen meets Space Engine. Yeah, it's, well, here we go. This is the event horizon. We're 700 kilometres out. Oh, it feels very, very wrong to be flying a spaceship down here. Prepare to be forgetified. <laughs> Oh, we're now in whoa inside the event horizon did you see that it kind of went weird and stuff <laughs> where are we are we anywhere boom oh. <laughs> and it kind of closes up. oh that was, <laughs> that was weird <laughs> ah. welcome to the negative universe Wowzers! Okay, that was that was pretty cool. I'm glad that we're invulnerable, but even even oddly enough, even though I know the ship's invulnerable, <laughs> it's still scary. <laughs> what an amazing thing! Wow. I'm now in the mirror. I mean, maybe we are. Maybe we <laughs> maybe we're not in the right universe. Who who would know? It's impossible to tell, isn't it? Um, you know, and there's G-class stars over there that just demand to be explored and, and stuff. Doesn't that look amazing? What a thing. I am genuinely gobsmacked down. It's just, it's just, a, it's a, I never thought, even from what we saw last week, that you'd, be, you'd have things like this in there. Um, look at that, the, with the nebula rise beyond the accretion disk of the black hole. It's just majestic watching it slowly rotate. I mean, it's obviously rotating at an crazy speed, but um, it's what a thing. What a thing. Oh. Um, let's just go back to the, tell you what, let's go back to the back of the ship. We've got to have a space beer because it's kind of a bit of a stream tradition, really. Even if I can't uncork it yet, I can still have one. As the as the black hole recedes, okay, put the beer on the table. And dunk. I've just got to be careful how I sit down. Will it knock it off? Oh, I think I fell off the table. <laughs> Oops. Uh, not sure what happened there. My beer has disappeared. Never mind. <laughs> it's there. Oh, there it is. It keeps knocking my beer onto the floor. Or is that my beer from last time? I can't get it. Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> Let's pretend I had a space beer. It's beer plus physics equals disaster. There we go. Look, we're sort of sitting in the back of us. I tell you, I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to sit down. I'm so impressed. I'm going to stand up. There we go. That's how, that's how impressed she is. She looks. She's standing there, silhouetted by a the accretion disk of a black hole, on the rear viewing platform of an interstellar starship, in the midst of a volumetric procedurally generated nebula. I mean, it's it's astonishing, astonishing. Yeah, a really, really, really impressive piece of work thus far. And all power to you, Dan. Keep it going because it's. It's amazing. This is the game we want to play. <laughs> really, really good. Um, that is an amazing shot, actually. Can I? I can do a screen capture. How do I do a screen capture? Is that? Is there a button for it? Is it just print screen? It's in Steam, isn't it? So there is a Steam button for screen captures. But I don't know what it is. <laughs> F12. Woo! There we go. F12. Um. What an amazing thing. Right, I'm going to go and switch off the engine of the Starship. We will stay here for next week's stream, and then we're going to have a look around this nebula. 
just to poke around see what it looks like kind of from the inside. Let's switch off the FTL drive. We definitely need a crew though, don't we? It's going to be... Oh, so I've just jumped it back out of the chair. Uh, disengage, there we go. But the shenanigans that we will have um, when we can... Look at that, the view from the upper deck as well. When we can crew a starship and go off exploring these sort of things, it's going to be it's going to be insane. Um, yeah, so the, the multi crew side is going to be uh, going to be amazing. Um, so yeah, so next week we're going to explore that that um, that nebula. I mean, that was insane. So if you missed that part of the stream, go back and watch it on YouTube because the the actual act of us flying through the nebula was just quite majestic as well. That was an insane thing. Um, and we hunted down and found a black hole with an accretion disk and, and oh, insane. I'd love to find a black hole with a planet nearby so you could go near the planet and then see the, the disk from there but that accretion disk is still shifting around and moving which is just a glorious thing you've done a fantastic job on the graphics there that's that's just an amazing fun thing to watch oh, that was good that was good Dan thank you ever again ever so much for jumping into the stream really really appreciate it um, and thank you so much again for the Lakai 9352 system, which is now, I don't know how many light years away. Uh, <laughs> but that was amazing as well. So for those of you who missed that, Dan um, did an amazing thing for me, put my the Lakai 9352 system, as it is in the Shadewood books, into the Starship Simulator. Um, so yeah, an incredible thing. And all power to you, Dan, on your continued quest to keep developing this thing. It is amazing already. And it can... Oh, the, the, the promise you've got there so just 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 amazing keep, keep going at it keep going we we want to see more it's really 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 impressive um um absolutely delightful thing to do and, and works so well i mean it's stable and it runs and the ship moves around and the warp drive works and <laughs> everything's nice it's really good um so yeah so um this um no stream for me tomorrow i'm afraid no stream for me on saturday or monday because of all the bank holidays the next stream will in fact be this again next thursday so um back next thursday for another um stream where we're going to go and explore the pillars of dan's creation i rather like that uh, <laughs> i think that's really gonna be really good so i will see you then until then have a wonderful break um everybody uh see you see you next week um, have a fantastic Easter, good Friday, Saturday. Have a fun with the bank holidays. Chill out, enjoy yourself, be good. Um, and I will see you in a week's time. <laughs> Take care then, my friends. Look after yourselves in the procedural infinite. <laughs> be good. And I will see you soon. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye now. <laughs>